you know, folks, for 40 years, there's three key techniques that I've used in my crappie fishing well to fill the boat up. I'm going to share them with y'all here today. Woo! The first thing I want to talk about is the importance of a loop knot. Here's a loop knot right here. I commonly use that loop knot, folks, when I'm vertical jigging or casting. You can use it either way. Why is it important? Well, what it does is when you're jigging, this plastic will float this jig up in a horizontal manner, the same way that, that a minner swims, okay? The freedom of that knot on that jig will allow that to happen. Very, very important. Now I'm gonna use this catfish hook. This is a 10 alt circle hook. I'm just gonna use it to demonstrate. But remember, it's a crappie jig. Just run the line through there. This is how quick this is. Look, folks, it's simple. Run this hook once, twice, three times. Look, we're done, done. Grab it by the eyelet, cinch down close as you can, and then cinch the knot towards the, the eyelet right there. Well, in reality, on a crappie jig, you can get it within an eighth of an inch from the actual eyelet. Quickest knot known to man. Crappie always feed up. So always, depending on how the water visibility is, always fish high. Always fish up a little bit high. If you fish below crappie, you're not going to catch them. You can hang it up. You might catch one every once in a while, but the key to catching a lot of them is fishing up above them slightly once the depth is found. One of the most, if not the most important thing about crappie fishing, well, is depth. And how to practice depth control. It takes a lot of years to do that. But one of the best ways to go about it, it don't matter if you're fishing deep, mid-depth, or shallow water. Once you catch a couple of fish, by fishing, by trying, by putting in the work, that's what it's all about. Once you catch a couple of fish, just repeat that. Just repeat that depth, keep that jig at that depth. There's a lot of different ways to do it. A 130 second ounce jig, well, after you make a cast, after it hits the water, usually a 130 second of an ounce will fall one foot per second. You can use the countdown method. 1 100, 2 100, 3 100. And by the time you get to 8, well, it's fell 8 feet. If that's where the fish was when you caught it, well, just do that. That's a simple way to do it. If you're vertical jigging, well, wherever you catch the fish, whatever depth, just get it back in the ballpark. A lot of people, believe it or not, on, on this kind of line right here, especially high vis, We'll take a permanent marker after they hook a fish, not real, but take a permanent marker, mark their line, let it dry while they're pulling in the fish. A lot of people will do that. You know, that's one way to go about it. I don't do that. I'm a partner, so I can guess it. This is a six foot rod. If I'm vertical jigging, I can let the jig hit the top of the water and I can guess six foot. Let it fall to that six foot depth. Say I'm catching them at 12 feet. Raise it back six more feet and let it fall back until it's tight with my rod tip. Whatever way you go about it, practice it. Practicing is the key to keeping depth control. Now how do I choose the color of jig that I'm gonna fish with when it comes to clear water or muddy water conditions, or stained water. An easy way of picking colors. Well, in clear water, you want natural looking colors to match the forage. And in dingy to muddy water, you want bright colors that'll stand out. 
Here is my number one favorite, folks, without a doubt, clear water color, and that's the blue eyes. Blue eyes. My second color, favorite color, is going to be the live minnow color. It's a very natural looking color. There's the back side, there's the front side. Very natural appearance of a minnow. But in muddy and stained water, the pink phantom has got to be my most favorite color. I've caught a many a fish on that color right there. The second best is going to be twilight. That's going to be it. And these colors, I guarantee you, work under those conditions. Well, folks, here's some footage from a few months ago of me and Mama Sue fishing for crappie. I hope y'all enjoy it. You got another one? Are you? Is it a big one? Are you sure? <laughs> what? Oh, it's a bass! <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> what was all that commotion about, though? Is it a little spotted bass or a large mouth? He's strong, Oh, yeah. Bass fish are strong. They're a lot stronger than these crappie fish. Let me see them right here. What is that? That's a spotty bass. Is it? Yeah. Boy, he took that and he went. He uh, went as hard as he could. That's a pretty spot. <laughs> now we'll let him go. Okay. We done mounted up enough crappie for supper. Alright. If you don't care. I don't care. I don't like keeping these. Yeah, they are. He's stout little bugger. Yep, let's put him back right here. Let's let him go. No need to keep him. We got crappie. Well, good job. <laughs> <laughs> he was mean, wasn't he? Look here. Oh, my goodness. This is crappie. We kind of found us a pattern here, folks. This is a crappie. We should have been on the main lake all day. I don't know what I was thinking. I was sticking stubborn in that creek. That's a good one right here. We just let him fight. I mean, it's a good one. Look at there, what a crappie. My, my, my. Oh, that's a mule, Lisa. I wonder if the fillets on him would be any account. Ooh, uh. oh, okay, well, if I get him, if I get him in, we'll put him in the bucket. Okay. He's giving me a fit on this two-pound line. I don't think I'm going to get him. <laughs> no, I'll get it. <laughs> oh, I'm having a ball out here with her today, folks. Oh, my goodness. My goodness, honey. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is that as big as Texas? <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that Texas? Yeah. Them Texans would be proud of that. Hook City would be proud of that crappie. <laughs> That's a beautiful fish right there, folks. Big crappie. Now, we've got enough. We're going to catch enough. Now, i got a, a pattern going. I had a little, I don't know why I had a tough time, but I did. Had a tough time this morning, didn't we? Yeah. A little bit with the wind, and the wind's calming down. But that crappie there, what I'm going to do would be a good one to eat. But they're not as good as these 11, 12, 13 inches that we have, 10 inches. I'm gonna just going to let that fish go because we got plenty for supper, and that's all we want. Right. So we're going to be conservationists about it and let him go and uh, let that fish uh, finish his job. Okay, let's let him go. Now I'd like Mama Sue to catch one like that. When they get that size, they fight. All right, see, 
Do you see that stick right there? Yeah. Yep. Let me get you in here. All right, throw towards it and work it back slow. That was a big one. Just pull it. There, get him. There you go. <laughs> I told you. Cause I'm an old man. <laughs> I'm an old man. Been doing this for years and years. That's a black crappie. And that's a good eating size there. We won't let him go. You got him hooked good enough, just reel up to your court and flip him in. Now reel up to your court. Reel, reel that slack in, baby. There you go. Now come on with him. Come on. There you go. You got him hooked at the top of the mouth. That's a good one, <laughs> I told you. <laughs> oh, proud of you. Well, yeah, don't worry about it. I'll catch a crappie while you're hung up in that tree. <laughs> I'll go get it. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'll go get it. Oh, Lord. Folks, when you take your wife fishing, you got to have patience. Well, I mean, well, okay. Let me get in there. Ow, ow, ow. There's that G. Oh. <laughs> but what you do, when, when you take your wife fishing, you got to have patience. Patience is the key to success anyway. And, you know, well, I'm just saying, oh, wow. Let's catch another. Woo. Look at the trees. Oh, the pretty plumage. Ah. Get him. There you go. <laughs> I would rather see her catch them than me catch them, folks. Just take your time. Remember, a crappie's got a tender mouth. So just let him wear out. That's another eating size crappie right there. Yep. I'm going to teach you. Look at there. That's, that's a good one right there. Let me net that one. That's a good fish right there. Shaking like a bass. Yep, shaking his head, trying to shake that jig, ain't he? That ain't a bad look at all right there. That's about a... Uh, let's see. Let's see how big he is right here. Probably about 13 and a half. Uh, we'll keep him. We'll keep you crappie. We'll eat that one. That's a good little jig, folks. That's a good jig. Not a name brand jig, but it don't matter. It don't matter at all. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Hey. God, don't get... And to remember, fish it when you can. Cause it's good for you!